Welcome to the Elder Abyss Show. For talking videos, it's the place to go. Game tips, rants, tactics, and more. What you'll find here, you can never be sure. Hey guys, welcome to the show. This episode is going to be our first entry into the COG handbook. We're going to be covering the fundamentals of Gears of War 3. And what I'm after with this COG handbook series that I want to do is kind of covering the fundamentals of the game, the game types, the weapons, and the maps. Uh, so that everybody has a, a general knowledge base of, of Gears 3 because that's a great thing to have, extremely handy and uh, knowing how to take advantage of all the multitude of aspects of this game will really help you out when you're out there running around the Gearsverse. <laughs> so we're going to kind of kick this off with uh, just the basics and the first thing I want to hit on is arguably, arguably the most important as well and that is the active reload. And the active reload is this idea in Gears that if you reload your weapon just right, you'll get a faster reload. If you reload your weapon perfectly, you'll get a faster reload and a damage increase for those bullets and a fire rate increase for those bullets. Pretty wicked concept. But it's got a flip side of that coin in that if you screw up your reload, well, then you jam your weapon and it takes longer than if you hadn't messed with it at all. So let's get down to how this works. All right, in Gears 3, as in every other Gears, there's two ways to reload your weapon. One is to run that baby dry, and you keep tapping the fire button, and it'll go into an automatic uh, weapon reload cycle. Now, you can also enter the weapon reload cycle manually by tapping the reload button, of course. You know, it's reload button. It's what it does. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Once the reload weapon, or once the reload cycle starts, you've got this slider under your weapon in the right hand corner there and as that slider moves across the bar you notice there's a white area and a really small bright white area now if you tap your reload button again you'll stop the slider now the trick to this is to where you stop the slider at now if you stop the slider and the the kind of the dimmer white part the bigger part you get an active the basic active reload which is the faster reload if you stop the slider in this really small bright white strip there, that's the perfect active reload. That gives you the damage boost, the fire rate boost, and the faster reload. That's, that's the sweet spot. Now, if you miss the white area altogether, which is easy to do when you're going for that perfect because it's always either at the beginning or the end of your active area, well, if you miss the white part altogether, then you jam your gun. And if you jam your gun, it takes longer to work through the whole reload process than if you would have just left it alone and not tapped it. Because that's an option too. You can, once you enter that reload cycle, you can just let it run its course. You don't have to hit it again. That, that's totally optional. You can let that slider go all the way across. And if it makes it all the way across, your reload, you know, your, your reload's done. It's just a basic reload. So, then that takes you know however long that takes depends on the weapon but if you uh, if you go like I said if you go for the active you can get a faster one you can get a damage boost but if you miss it you're gonna jam your weapon and it's gonna take even longer than if you hadn't done anything at all so it's a it's a risk reward thing but it it can come in really handy extremely handy especially in combat situations but here's the thing to keep in mind when you do achieve the active, the perfect active, and you get that boost, that boost only counts for the bullets that were reloaded. So if you just reloaded half a clip, you nailed a perfect active, then only that half a clip that you loaded gets the boost. How do you tell? Uh, if you look there on the blinker bar, you'll notice that blinking part of the ammo counter. That's the part that are reloaded. That's the part that, uh, that, that nailed the reload and gets the boost. 
Now, here's the other thing to keep in mind. Those boosts, the damage and the, and the fire rate, are only good for seven seconds. So you got seven seconds to burn them. So you only want to try to, get, to grab that active right as you're heading into combat. So if you, uh, in other words, if you've got a Lancer, you've only got half a clip in it, you've got a, you know, half, half empty, half full kind of situation, baby. And there's nobody around, don't reload, man, hold off. Wait until you're getting ready to engage somebody and then go for the reload. That way if you nail the active, you've got the next seven seconds to use that, uh, that boost on your ammo. And if you don't, you know, hopefully you at least nailed the basic active and got a good reload. <laughs> And there's always the risk that you jam it and you might want to turn around and run the other way. But keep that in mind because the active reload is a very important part, particularly in close quarter combat. Huge. Yeah, huge. It, the active reloads, uh, well, I don't want to go back all the way through the trilogy, but that's how it is in Gears 3. Keep it in mind. It will benefit you greatly. And uh, also keep in mind that the, the perfect active reload and the whole timing and when you hit it and all that is different for each weapon. So they used to kind of all be the same. Now every one of them's different. So you really kind of kind of keep an eye on it as it goes across through there and try to nail it until you get to the point where you've used the weapon so much that you've you kind of got the timing down. But uh, there is going to be a, a unique timing for every weapon now, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool. Um, all right, so that's got the active reload. Just keep that in mind. Good stuff. Remember. All right, now the other hot topic that a lot of guys are, a lot of guys are just I don't know. They're, they I don't think they understand exactly what it is, so they kind of compare it to things that is not even close. And what I'm referring to is the down but not out, and uh, which is simply referred to as down or downs on the scoreboard. And what that is, that's when. Uh, Say you're rifling a guy, you're shooting a guy, and he drops to his knees. All right, so he's down. He's not dead, so he's not out. So he's down, but not out. That's that's how uh, that's how Epic refers to it. But it's it's kind of slang term is down. So the guy's down. What can he do when he's down? Pretty much nothing. Uh, he can crawl. Um, he can tap this crap out of the A button and hope to get up a little faster. And that's based on the bleed out time, which I'll hit in just a second. So, what's the purpose of the down but not out? It ties to a core fundamental of gears, and that is executions, baby. So you down a guy, then you get to run up and execute him. And so every weapon has its own little execution, and there's little extra execu executions you can pull, like the beat downs and stuff. It's one of the best parts of gears, and that's kind of the reason that's in there. Now, that that being said, what good is it for for you if you're down? Well, you you do have a chance to survive. Uh, you can one of your buddies or one of your teammates can revive you and get you back up and back into the fight. You can wait the bleed out time and you'll stand back up except for in classic war zone kind of situation and uh, the bleed out time is just basically how long it takes you to die. But in team deathmatch and, and execution and that kind of thing, the bleed out's basically how long you're going to stay down before you get back up. And you get back up on your feet and you're ready to go. And if you tap the A button while you're down and do not move, so you can't crawl around but just tap the A button, you'll get up faster. If you crawl around, it, the a, it, that won't help you get up faster but you crawl around so you can kind of while you're down you can move around at least behind cover so that it's a little safer for uh, for your teammates to come get you now the thing to keep in mind with downs is that uh, basically you only have two it's, it's kind of a tko situation you get two downs the third one you die you're out there's no down <laughs> so keep that in mind uh, you know two downs and you're out or, well, I guess, you know you know what I mean. You've got two downs. The third time, you're dead. You die. There's no, there's no down. But that gives, uh, like I said, that gives the guys that, that put you down, that gives them the opportunity to come up and do their execution. Because, you know, executions are a core part of gears, and so the downs and the executions kind of go hand in hand. They work together. It's, 
like I said, the guy can't do anything while he's down. He can't shoot. He can't do anything. All he can do is hope to get up. <laughs> so that's, that's really all he's got is a little bit of hope. So it's not like Last Stand in Call of Duty or some garbage like that. He can't sit there and shoot you with a pistol. No, he can't do that. He's down. He's helpless. That's the point. He's helpless. He's ripe for the executing. So that, that's what that is. Don't mistake it for something that it's not. And, uh, you know, just, just take, take that at face value. There's nothing more going on there than what it looks like. The guy's down on his knees bleeding out on the floor. He's, uh, he's three-quarters done. He's waiting to be executed with a little bit of hope. He might get up. Might. Uh, oh, the bleed out. I didn't mention that. But that, that bleed out time, it, it don't mean a whole lot, but you will see it like on server settings, and particularly private match settings. It's an option that you can adjust. And, but that's what that is. That bleed out time is basically how long he's going to stay down. Uh, like I said, in classic Warzone rules, that would be how long before he bleed out and he would just die. Uh, in Team Deathmatch and Execution and, and those type of rules, that's, uh, that's how long before he'll stand up. And like I said, you can shorten that by, by wailing on the A button if you're the guy that's down. So keep that in mind. That's what that is. It's nothing more than that. That's just, uh, it's fuel for the execution, baby. Fuel for the execution. Now, that being said, reviving. For the love of God, revive if you can. <laughs> if it's your teammate, revive his ass if you can. But keep in mind, you don't want to you don't want to expose yourself because one of my favorite tactics is to use a downed player as bait and kind of sit back with the digger or the boom or a nade and clean house as soon as some guys come to revive him. So be careful with it. Try to, uh, you know, if, you've, if you can actually talk to the guy, if he's talking on the mic, try to get him to crawl behind cover and then you go get him. But if, uh, you know, <laughs> depends on how bad you want the revive points and how safe you think you are if you're just going to jump out in the open and revive somebody. So, you know, do what you can to, to, save, uh, to save your team that, that death but don't cost more deaths than uh, than what should be used to uh, <laughs> for the situation, if you know what I mean. Particularly in execution. Team deathmatch, yeah, yeah, it still matters. You've only got so many respawns. But in execution, all you've got is your guys that are walking around on the floor at the time. So if one of them goes down, two guys run up to help him. Guy across the map with the boom just scored three kills keep that in mind because <laughs> I like to be the guy with the boom uh, another thing to keep in mind on the core concepts uh, I don't want to run this one out too long but uh, another good uh, another good mechanic that often gets overlooked is stopping power and what stopping power is is the ability of your bullets to actually slow uh, an opponent down uh, in this example here we can see this guy is trying to uh, retrocharge me. I mean, he's coming at me like a bull with these horns, right? Well, not so fast. See, that's stopping power. That hammer burst, see how it almost stopped him in his tracks? That's stopping power. So uh, if a guy's charging you, don't be afraid to, to pull your rifle out and, and slow his roll, <laughs> basically, <laughs> which has become increasingly important in Gears 3, given the abundance of that noob cannon the sawed off. Did I just call that a noob cannon? I did. I'm sorry. If you use it, whatever. <laughs> but that thing is crazy. And those guys, they have to get they have to get right in your face. So they will charge you like uh like there's no tomorrow man like there's no holding them back some of these guys will just run right at you and will not stop until they either die or they get close enough to pull the trigger and, and just jib you all over the place but with stopping power just keep that in mind if uh, the guy is unfortunate enough to just run headlong at you and not try at least try to bounce around some cover then you've got stopping power on your side and you can slow his roll to the point that you'll probably down him before he gets close enough to uh, to jib you with that thing. 
Yeah. The same thing with the retro charge. You most of the time you can stop those guys if you've got enough room. Um, the Nasher, now well, that's kind of a trade-off because that the, the Nasher, the Nasher, it's not so much the the jib range on it. It's it's the one hit down range. And that thing's got a pretty good one hit down. So even if you slow his row, he may come up out of that roadie run and just pop you and down you. So just keep that in mind. It is a it is a very important aspect to to combat those those guys that are just uh, headset on charging you. So that's why it's in there. That's the reason they put it in there. Uh, that's been in since Gears 2, and uh, it's actually working. You know, Gears 2 it was a little iffy. It seems to be working really good in three. And uh, also another thing to keep in mind with those active reloads is it gives you a boost. Uh, you know, with your damage and your fire rate, it gives you a boost to stopping power as a side benefit. So if you've got an active man, you can. An active and a lancer will stop a dude flat in his tracks. <laughs> Same with a hammer burst. Hammer burst hits like a Mack truck with stopping power. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, keep all those things in mind. And we're going to move on. And so I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Y'all have a good one. Acceptable. Because in the end, you've all already been told. Just gamers growing old.